In this video, we're going to analyze the Great Ape transformation, assessing its characteristics, advantages, and limitations, and also suggest why it was phased out after the Science Saga of Dragon Ball Z. So stay tuned to learn more. Kaioshin Karto! Hey there guys, it's Kai Shinkode here helping you to expand and enhance your knowledge of Dragon Ball and on this channel we do Dragon Ball knowledge videos, Dragon Ball merchandise reviews and of course coverage of Dragon Ball Super so if you're new here maybe you'd like to subscribe. Now the Great Ape form is the treacherous kaiju transformation of the Saiyans. It was originally a form that Kid Goku manifested into upon staring at the full moon for a few seconds. At first it was a one-time convenient way for Bulma, Yamcha, Pua and Oolong and Goku to escape a prison in the Dragon Ball episode 12, but it also became a complete nuisance as Goku was unable to control it for the rest of the original Dragon Ball. But it helped to solidify Goku's mysterious character and it also was ironic to find that a pure-hearted boy that could ride the Kintuan as a result also had an evil, destructive opposite side that even killed his earthly parents. The transformation featured again in Dragon Ball Z as Vegeta used it against Goku and also Gohan could use the form. Now the Japanese name for the Great Ape transformation is Ozaru. According to Herms, the Japanese translator, the term Ozaru literally translates to big monkey and not Great Ape. Although this name has been popular in the community, I'm going to refer to the transformation as Ozaru. The Ozaru form looks like a big monkey but with other outstanding features such as red eyes and a hairstyle that is tailored to the sign user. For example, Goku even with all his pointy hair only had a tuft bit of hair on the top of his head as an Ozaru, whereas Vegeta had all spiky hair. When transforming, the Saiyan's clothes are usually ripped apart, but there were many Saiyan warriors who used armor that was designed to stretch according to their body size, as was the case with Vegeta, of course. Ozaru was initially revealed in Manga Chapter 21 and Dragon Ball Episode 12 when Goku transformed accidentally by looking at the moon, which fortuitously broke Bulma and the gang out of an escape-proof prison. Goku stated how Grandpa Gohan was killed by a monster that came out at the full moon. So Goku must have transformed a few times before Grandpa Gohan was killed because he told him to never look at the full moon. It was inferred in this chapter that Goku killed Grandpa Gohan whilst in the Ozaru form. Now Goku transformed again during the 21st Tenkaichi Budokai in manga chapter 51 when his tail grew back but he regressed when Jackie Chun destroyed the moon with a Kamehameha. The next major appearance was in manga chapter 208 in Dragon Ball episode 8 when a night with a full moon caused Gohan to transform. Piccolo necessitated destroying the moon as a result, so the transformation could be easily reversed by destroying the source of the Zeno being the moon, or removing the cyan tail by cutting it off or pulling it off. In episode 18 in Dragon Ball Z only, this was six months after Gohan first transformed, his tail had grown back so that Gohan became an Ozaru again. By this point, Gohan had become much stronger, which reflected in the power increase once again in Ozaru. Piccolo stated how Gohan was capable of even destroying the Earth at this point as a result. And Piccolo was also astounded at the side of the moon which he had destroyed before, but it was only a hologram projected by Goku's original Saiyan pod. This artificial moon allowed Brute's waves to be reflected into Gohan's eyes. Now in Marker Chapter 233, Vegeta revealed the secret to the Ozaru transformation to Goku. Vegeta explained that Saiyans with tails can transform into giant monkeys. King Kai told Goku in Dragon Ball Z episode 20 how the Saiyans exterminated the Tsufruians by transforming into Ozaru and destroying their cities. The Dragon Ball GT Perfect Files state, there's also a theory that Saiyans were originally Ozarus who gained intelligence and became human, but you know, this is just the theory. Now the Ozaru transformation requires the action of staring at a full moon or a sphere that acts as a moon formed by Vegeta's Powerball technique. This Powerball costed Saiyans a little energy lost to produce it, but Vegeta stated the greatest Saiyans could compress the planet's atmosphere into a Powerball to create a small artificial moon that reflects 17 million Zeno. The reflected sunlight contains Brute's waves which are mixed with the planet's oxygen to presumably create Zeno isotopes of oxygen. Brute's waves are measured in units called Zeno. Now the moon's albedo, which is a measure of optical brightness, is 0.136, meaning only 13.6% of sunlight incident on the moon is 
actually reflected to the Earth. It also only takes approximately 1.26 seconds for the moonlight to hit the Earth's surface, which explains why Vegeta could transform so quickly against Goku. When a Saiyan absorbs at least 17 million Zeno of moon reflected sunlight per second through their eyes, a reaction occurs in the glands in their tails, which begins a transformation. In Dragon Ball Z, the Tree of Might, Turles used the Power Ball technique to provoke a transformation in Gohan, for Turles knew he was empowered by the fruit to beat any foreseeable opponent. Turles also said the Power Ball's brute's wave effect would keep a sign in Ozaru for a limited time even if the power ball was destroyed, which Turles did. Perhaps it was because the Brute's waves are mixed with the oxygen, so the Saiyans could breathe in Brute's waves oxygen until it was depleted from the immediate atmosphere. Now when Goku and Gohan transformed into Orzaru, they were unable to control their aggression and attacks, becoming completely mindless. Krillin questioned whether the Saiyans lose their reason or just regain their Saiyan savagery. Vegeta, however, must have gone through excessive training to stay in control of himself, with even being able to talk as an Orzaru. We can assume this was a natural part of the Saiyan progression as they grew older and became part of the Saiyan army. This was demonstrated in Dragon Ball Z Bardock, the father of Goku, as Bardock and his team were in complete coordination whilst destroying a civilization and refrained from attacking each other. They could even remember the terrible night of destruction when they met the next morning. Hey, what a night out guys. In terms of power, the multiplier for Ozaru is 10 times the base battle power. This made Vegeta stronger from 18,000 base to 180,000 in his Ozaru form in the Saiyan Saga. However, this was likely weaker as he got beaten up by Goku and unleashed his powerful Gallic Gun. So we can only really speculate he was stronger than 40,000 and weaker than 180,000. But this is much stronger than Goku in Kaioken times 3 at 21,000 battle power. In Ozaru form, Vegeta's power had a huge demonic aura as stated by Yajirobe, which was largely down to the Dark Prince's heart. The advantages of Ozaru aren't many at this stage in Dragon Ball Super, but it provides more of a boost than Kaioken and isn't nearly as destructive to the body. Vegeta's Ozaru was much faster than Goku's Kaioken x3, but at this point, Goku was very severely fatigued. The Ozaru form makes full utilization of the Kiai, which are energy beams mixed with shouting. These demonstrations are key, are very powerful and require only a few seconds to release in Ozaru form, so they are very sudden and difficult to counter. So why haven't we seen Ozaru return in Dragon Ball since the Saiyan Saga? Well, apart from Ozaru returning in Dragon Ball GT, the main reason was because the Ozaru multiplier of times 10 was insufficient compared to Super Saiyan's times 50 multiplier, which is five times as strong as Ozaru. Obviously, Ozaru can't match that. Another reason is because of its size increase, and as Bergamo showed in Dragon Ball Super, big forms create a lot of blind spots when fighting normal sized opponents. Toriyama has also directly prevented the possibility of Ozaru being used with the Universe 6 signs as they evolved without tails. It is slightly different in the anime where they say that the signs lost their tails a long time ago because Kaba had no knowledge of them. Toriyama also phased out tails in Dragon Ball Z after the Saiyan Saga, but the reasons for this will be included in another video. I personally don't think that we'll see the return of Orzaru in Dragon Ball Super in any kind of Orzaru Super Saiyan Blue, etc. And I think it's fairly clear that by Toriyama not introducing the Universe 6 signs with Tails, his intentions to not revisit this part of Dragon Ball are very clear. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the Orzaru transformation. In a future video in the transformations playlist, I will cover the Golden Grade 8 form, but in the next video, we will be covering the false Super Saiyan transformation. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications to watch it. Thanks for watching this video, and if you got value out of it, please Kaioken that like button, and definitely subscribe to expand and enhance your knowledge of Dragon Ball, as well as the coverage of Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball merchandise reviews. Until next time, you can watch the following videos of mine, and we'll see you soon.